الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continue on in our study, our hadith course. We reach the third hadith. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal ara'aytum law an law anna nahran bi bab ahadikum yabtasilu minhu kull yawmin khamsa marrat hal yabqa min in this hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the topic of this hadith has to do with the importance of making good wudu and that wudu is one of the ways that we erase our sins. One of the ways we erase our sins is what? Al wudu. It is reported on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what do you think? If there was a river running past the door of one of you, and he bathed in it every day, five times a day. Would there remain any dirt on him? They said, no dirt would remain on him. He said, that is like the five daily prayers. Allah removes thereby the sins. Mutafakun alayhi. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the message of Allah wasallam, informs us that a person who performs the five daily prayers may be likened to a person who washes in a river five times a day. Just as such and such a person would be free from any dirt. So the one who prays five times a day is free from sin. As Allah the exalted wipes out his sins because of his regular prayer. So it shows us the importance of making regular salat, of course, and for the men to make regular salat in the masjid. Wallahu musta'an. Some of the benefits uh, in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The permissibility of asking rhetorical questions in order to teach. So a rhetorical question. This means, this is when we ask a question, we know the answer, but we ask it in order for it to be a benefit to others. Perhaps even when I asked you, I said, uh, so what removes sin? I know the answer. But I was asking you to get you to repeat about wudu and to emphasize. So it was for teaching. That's a rhetorical question. It means you don't really know, you don't really need the, uh, you don't really, you know the answer. But you ask the question in order to get a response from others in order to teach or illustrate a point. So this hadith shows that it's permissible to ask rhetorical questions. And usually you have this from the ulama. A lot of times the ulama or students of knowledge, they're teaching and they will ask these types of questions in order to get a response from the people. The scholar knows, he knows the, the answer to the question, but he wants to see if his students are paying attention or if they know he wants to quiz his students and he wants it to highlight uh, highlight the answer or to highlight the important point he wants to emphasize. Another benefit of this hadith, this hadith shows us the permissibility of using similitudes in order to make a point, that it's also permissible to make a story. Now you don't, to use a story in order to make a point on something. That does not mean we make our whole dawah based on stories though. That's very important. So we might give an example, we might give a, a, a story to illustrate a point, but you don't want your whole dawah to be based on stories. As, as the Salaf used to speak about uh, these kind of individuals in their time who didn't deal, who didn't uh, give illustrations of the ahadith, didn't give the ah ahadith and the ayat, the dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah, but instead they just gave stories and became uh, a source of entertainment instead of real dawah. 
So we have to be careful of going too far. But we want to give the similitudes examples so people can understand. And the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith gave the similitude of the person who, uh, uh, what did he say, Sallallahu Alaihi that the one who washes, of course, makes uh, makes wudu five times a day, that there will, there will not be any dirt, will not remain on him. And so likewise, sin will not remain on this person, okay, from doing this uh, activity, from making wudu. So the person who washes in a river, of course, they'll be clean. If they're washing themselves five times in a river, it's going to remove a lot of uh, dirt and impurities. So this is the likeness or similitude to the one who washes five times a day in preparation for prayer. That not only does it remove dirt from those places of wudu, you know, it helps to keep uh, them clean. It's a type of hygiene. But more importantly, it's a spiritual hygiene in that it removes the sin. It removes sin. Uh, another benefit of this hadith that sins are wiped out by Allah through prayer. So by praying, this removes sin. Wudu also removes sin. The love, uh, another benefit of this hadith, the love of the Prophet وسلم, for his people and his concern for their welfare. This, this hadith also illustrates for us that the Prophet وسلم, loved his ummah and he loved to give them uh, guidance and toji hat and direction. And he was afraid for us as the Ummah to fall into sin, especially like uh, the minor shirk, or to fall into the deadly sins, or uh, anything that would harm us. Or he was also afraid, and this shows his love for his Ummah, of saying something that would become an obligation upon his Ummah. That would make it difficult, something that would be difficult to practice. The Prophet وسلم, said in another hadith, The Prophet وسلم, said, If I wasn't afraid for my nation, then I would have commanded them to make, uh, to use their miswak with every wudu. Why was he afraid of commanding it? He was afraid that Allah would have made it an obligation. So then that means every wudu you would have to make use a miswak. So he, he didn't want, so the Prophet Sallallahu was, was, had concern for his ummah. He had concern for uh, his sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and the ummah jami'in. Another important point with regards to this hadith is the sins we're talking about are not the major sins. So it's very important for us to understand. Although it says in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would remove with it, meaning this will do the sins. This is a reference as the ulama mentioned about many other hadith which which have this show the fadl of wudu and, and other uh, making umrah and, and so forth that this relates to the minor sins because the major sins you have to make toba from major sins if a person commits zina if a person drinks alcohol a person uh, does drugs or they do some major sin those major sins they have to make toba they have to repent and part of repentance, they have to have sincerity in their heart, and they have to uh, have the determination to leave the sin. Like, I don't, I'm not going back to that sin. They're determined to do that. Also with that, that they also remove themselves from the environment of sin. And that they do not uh, go back to that sin. So it's very, very important for us to know and understand that and be of those who strive to perfect our wudu and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.